a little messy. Just click got it. Okay, so I think most of you already know me already. So I'm Scott Teeples, and I'm going to give you a presentation today on the national essay uh, contest, and it's for the high school students. And this is going to be a first year for the national contest. Oregon did it last year. I did this little presentation at the national conference here a week or so ago. And I would just like you to take, and if you've got questions, just try to speak up. I'll try to breathe a little bit so that uh, you guys can uh, get on there. It is being recorded, so I can take and and I will, it'll be on, uh, the link will be on the Oregon FCE website, which is oregon dash fceorg and also it's actually I record them on YouTube and so you can find it on YouTube but it's sometimes easier to just go get the link there so I'm going to get started here a little bit um, I want to introduce uh, some people uh, I'm Scott Teeples I'm in Oregon and Wanda why don't you introduce yourself I'm Wanda Burdell and I'm from Tennessee and I got a Laura, and she's muted. I, I see she's in Marshall County, Tennessee. Here I am. Okay. I'm back. Yes. Okay. And uh, how about Linda? Linda Hanbury. She's muted. She's in <laughs> Mississippi. Sorry. She's... Yep. Mississippi. And Roy is... Go ahead and introduce yourself, Roy. My name is Roy Acker. And I'm the uh, executive director of the Community of Christians Helping Youth, CCHY. We're after school, summer program, and we're year round. Well, welcome. And I, I see Loretta is on there, but I, I, she's muted and I'm not sure she knows how to unmute there. So she's in Hi. Oregon. So good morning, Loretta. And Marion. Yeah, Marion Baines from Oregon, Seventh Falls, Oregon. Yeah. And Bonnie's going to be on here pretty quick. She just got home from getting her hair cut. So she'll be on in a minute. She's from Oregon. And Tony. Tony ran away. She's from Oregon. She's also here in Klamath Falls. And I'm right here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, you can introduce yourself, Tony. I'm Tony from Klamath. And Barbara. Hi, from Hawaii. Welcome from Hawaii. So we were on there a little bit. So anyway, so um, I, I'll just go ahead and get started. And please, if you got a question while we're going, please just kind of interrupt me and we'll get on there. I'm going to share a screen. I got a little PowerPoint for you. And I hope it answers most of your questions. Yeah, you can just on there and just... Okay, so somebody tell me if you can see that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to introduce the 2025 National FC uh, High School Age Character Counts Essay Contest. And it's a little different than the um, the fourth grade one because we don't do an artwork. We're not going to do any artwork on there on that. And... National FCE is excited to announce that starting in 2025, there will be a National FCE High School Age Character Counts Contest. Oregon FCE sponsored the first high school SA contest in 2024 and proposed to become a national contest. Your national board has approved the National High School Age Contest starting in 2025. And I'm gonna give you some dates they're very, very important dates as we get in there, and I'll give you those in a little bit here. The theme for the 2025 essay contest is trustworthiness. And this actually comes from one of the character counts, the six pillars of character. And so that's where it's coming from, and this will be identically the same theme that is for the fourth grade contest. Now, Oregon actually does a second and third grade contest but they don't do it on the on that theme right there. So we kind of warm them up, I say, for the um, 
for the fourth grade contest. And I, and I actually, I got that idea from North Dakota FCE. It says throughout the years, there's been a discussion across the USA about producing, uh, producing some way of involving young adults into the National Association for Family and Communication, or FCE. And by the way, Roy, they do, these kids do not have to be members of FCE. You do not have to be a member of FCE to, to, to work this in. You'll have to work out the details as far as your state contest with, uh, with Linda. So we want to introduce them. And, and basically, they're going to be high school age. Oregon came up with a means of doing this. It says, throughout the years, fourth grade students were introduced to FCE through the national fourth grade essay and artwork contest, but nothing for young adults, at least in most places. <clears throat> it was way past time to introduce and invite young adults into FCE. And as we know that FCE, were kind of aging herself out. Something needed to be done. It says all the forms and information for the 2025 National FCE High School Age Character Counts Essay Contest can be located on the national website. And I'm actually going to take you there. And the main thing you just need to remember, it's nafce.org. And then that resource page or resource library is the page that we'll go to. And I'm going to show you that here in a few minutes. There are generic forms that will be need to be formatted by each state. So basically, there's some forms on there, and I'll show them to you when I get there. They are generic forms because you're going to have to put in your state name and who your state coordinator is that's going to take care of judging them and so forth at your state level and then and then sending on there. Instructions for editing the generic forms are also like, located on the website. I'm also going to show you the or that they are already formatted for the uh, Oregon FCE one, and I'll go through it briefly so you can see how they're formatted. And basically, they're pretty easy to do. And if you've got any questions on any of this at any time, please give me a call, and I'm going to give you my contact information here in a minute. There are also two brochures relating to the contest available, including the National FCE generic version which right there, and that is actually the one there, and that is available on the national website. Um, there's also a, uh, a an Oregon version, which is all filled out. And the Oregon version is the one that I give out to the students when I'm talking to them here in Oregon. And and the, the, only, the only difference between the two of them is that, if, for example, and you can see this, if you look at this on this yellow part right here where it says your state coordinator, that is blank. And also, if you look at over here and you see your amounts of money or whatever might you be given at the state level, that is also blank and you need to fill it out. The National High School Age Character Counts Essay Contest provides students with the opportunity to write about the character counts theme for the current year. And if you know anything about character counts, it's it, a lot of young people, a lot of young men, young women need these kind of things while learning a little bit about the FC organization. Something that I really wanted to include in this, and it does include, is that the students, sometimes they enter a contest, but they don't know anything about the, the organization that is sponsoring it. So anyway, so they're gonna take part of it as a quiz, and I'll talk about that. It also provides students with the opportunity to earn award funds by winning or placing at the state and national level. And I will tell you that in Oregon, our first place winner is $500, second place is $300, and our third place is $200. And I think I cover that later. And then at the national level, and I'll cover that again, but I mentioned that it is $500 for first place, $300 for second place, and $200 for third place. And I know that's not an awful lot of money for some people, but that's about all we can afford at this time. The character counts essay themes are the following year. So this year it's trustworthiness. 2025 is trustworthiness. And then you can see down through the years, 2026 is respect and then responsibility, fairness, caring. And then we'll rotate back to the one that was actually this year, which was citizenship. Again, <laughs> if any questions or comments, please let me know. The rules. 
Go ahead. When you said high school age, is that ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders? Well, it could be ninth graders too. Yeah, starting at ninth okay. grade. And 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 that 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 brings up a, a point there. And 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 I want to. Uh, I'm not going to check any birth certificates. Well, I, I understand I, that, but. <laughs> and you're but but high school here starts in ninth grade. I just wanted to make sure that that was where y'all okay. were starting. And, and yeah, so basically it's ninth, 10th and 11th and 12th grade. But I want to tell you that you're going to, you may come into some situations where it's a little bit different. Bonnie had a nephew who graduated from high school when he was 14. So he was actually in high school when he was 12. And if we come across that like that, if they're old enough to be in high school. I think they're good enough for the contest. Sometimes you'll have a fifth year senior that maybe is hanging around for another year. They may be 19. And I, I don't want to get splitting hairs, if that makes so sense. We're just going to go by the grade level. Yeah, and, and, and please remember, this does not have to be done at, at school. The rules, yeah. Yeah, the, the rules and guidelines for the national and state FCE high school contest character counts are, are as follows. The SA contest is open to all young adults that will be high school age on the date of the contest which is March 1st, 2025. And I hope people don't split hairs on that. Just give them the benefit of the doubt. The essay can be written at home, school, or other places that are available. So Roy, I think you're, you're, where you're working with those students there, that would be a wonderful place to do that. It says the essay may be written by the applicant and not by the parents, guardians, teachers, friends, or others. It needs to be written by them. The application form, and very important because 10% of the contest is the application form, must be filled out and signed by the necessary signers. And part of that reason is because we want the parents to know, are their guardian, whichever it might be, that they're in this contest. And that also, that if, if we have winners, we're going to be posting some of their pictures on websites and so forth and there's also permission we do the same thing on the fourth grade and i want to talk about that on the fourth grade essay in our word contest if you want to see this this year's winners and winners in the past go to the national website and i just posted those the other day and they actually do a little video of them writing their essay and also i i uh, scan and put in the uh artwork and i also scan and put in their essays and some of those fourth graders are wonderful essays. The essay must be written about current national SE character counts essay theme. And again, for this year, it will be trustworthiness. The essay must be properly formatted with name, title, etc. And the essay must be between a thousand and three thousand words. And that's where I'm going to tell you that I wouldn't split hairs. If I had a student that turned it in, it was 999 words. And you said, well, I'm not going to count the, the title or whatever it is. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be splitting hairs. And basically, I've found that most of them that did it in Oregon, a thousand words is going to be about five pages double spaced. The essays must be typed. So they, they have the option when they're in uh, for the fourth graders and most of them handwrite them. I think this year we had one that was turned in that was hand uh, typed and they can do it either way in, in the fourth grade, but in high school, they need to be typed. Okay, essay instructions using the theme for the 2025 contest, trustworthiness writer must write and discuss and thoughts on the following. on the following. And there's four things and these are things that I came up with and we used it and it was very successful because I want them to talk about it. And last year was citizenship. And uh, boy, uh, us in Oregon, we learned a lot about our students on citizenship. The following things. First of all, how did trustworthiness affect our, how did, how did trustworthiness affect our communities at the local, state, national, and world level in the past? So trustworthiness in the past. That's the first part of it. They need to, and you know, whoever's judging it needs to judge, did they did they kind of meet on this right here? And uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later again, but we use a scoring guide, a rubric. Some of you have seen those. And it says, how does trustworthiness affect our communities at this local, 
state, national, and world level in the present. So now you got past, you got present. Third part of it is how will trustworthiness affect our communities at the local, state, national, and world level in the future? And I think that all of us will agree that that's very important for the future. So you got past, present, and future. And then the fourth part, the part of it is, is how does and will trustworthiness affect you personally now and in the future? So they need to talk about how it affects them now and how it will affect them in the future. And whoever's judging those will have to kind of see if they met in those kind of areas right there. Any questions on on any of the uh, the four areas you need to cover? Okay, thank you. And judging will be done on the following. 10% on the application form. I that, would love to have something sent in from Prime though. Okay. <laughs> So 10% on the application form, it needs to be filled out correctly. It needs, you know, I, I, and I guess, I, I guess I'm guess i just a stickler on it. That's the old school teacher in me. Uh, but I, I don't know how many scholarship applications I've been on a board or something like that, and I've received them, and they're just done very poor. So 10%, 10% is on there. And I will tell you that every applicant that we had from Oregon, they were, the, the, the T's were crossed, the I's were dotted. They were perfect. 80% on the essay, the actual writing of the essay is in that. So that's the main majority is the essay. You know, how did they meet those? Did they cover all four of those areas right there? And then 10% on FCE knowledge quiz. And the reason why I, and, and, and I put this in here is so that they need to get to know a little bit about the organization that is sponsoring it. So that maybe maybe just maybe some of them might be interested enough in that maybe they would join as they become a little older a scoring guide or scoring rubric which is included and i'll go through that i'll show you that to you later will be used for judging the contest please read over it carefully for full details on scoring criteria and if you've ever used one they're pretty easy to use because it'll tell you did it meet this or was it did it excel did it not do it you kind of put some points in there the way we did in Oregon, we actually had seven people who judged those. We took the total points and add them up, divided it by seven, and that's how we came up with our, our place winners. Judging all forms, FCE quizzes and essays will be done by at least, at least three people. And, I, and the national FCE is already aware of that. When national FCE does this, they will have to have three people that are judging those things at the national level. And these are very, very important. It says uh, uh, a state contest, name of the state. For example, this would be Oregon. It might be Mississippi. It might be Tennessee, whatever you have on there. Association for Family and Community Education. Each state FCE contest will run between April 1st and March 1st. April 1st of 2024. So actually, it's already started. And so the sooner you can get those out there. Now, I know school has started So in some states. So now would be a good time to get them out there. I actually got some out in Oregon last spring, and I've already got uh, probably six or eight eighth graders that were interested, but they're going to be ninth graders next year, so they're eligible. And you ought to see the excitement. Some of them are really excited about it, whether they turn them in or not. March 1st, April 1st, those need to be the state. And the reason why there's a, 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 a little, and I'll show you where the, where the national one comes in. They're all state contest application, essays, and FSA knowledge quizzes must reach the state contest coordinator on or before March 1st, 2025. And I want to tell you that we had a little situation where um, I was actually going to be handed the forms, and we had a severe snowstorm come in here. And so I actually accepted one on March 2nd because they, they, they didn't want anybody to go out and they, they were only about 20 miles away, but I wasn't gonna ding some girl for not driving 20 miles an hour through a snowstorm. The state police are saying, please stay off the roads. Later incomplete entries will not be accepted. The state winners and placers of the state contest will be announced by April 15th or before. So it's up to the state. So the state has a, a month and a half to take and submit that to your state coordinator. And if you have a state coordinator that's willing to do that and they need help on, on that a little bit, just have them contact me. 
All application forms, SA and SE knowledge quizzes can be submitted via mail, email, or in person. So, you know, they, they can mail it to you. And I just make sure that the postal date on it is correct. And you know how the post office is. So if I was you, if you're in doubt, give them the benefit of the doubt. There's sometimes I'm not going to blame them for the, for the post office. And then your state coordinator, you're going to have to have a state coordinator and they need to have, you need to put these on your forms. You need name, mailing address, city, state, uh, zip code, uh, phone number, so forth. And each state must provide their own contest coordinator. And like I said, if they need help on that, they, 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 they just can ask me and I'll help them on it. Contact your state coordinator, Scott Teeples, national contest coordinator, and, and Judy Fulmer has asked me to do that. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, and my phone number and my email are all over there. Sometimes you'll see an email that says sfteeples at, at charter.com. And that'll work for most people, but I'm having trouble with that email. So just contact me if you have any questions or anything. Something I can help you with, please contact me. Oh, it's charter.net. My wife got me on there. Yeah, it's charter.net. Uh, state money allocations and funds by the following, and, and you need to you need to figure that out. Now, I, you can do it. You don't have to give them Ontario value. You can do it and just say, we're going to do it, and we're going to send the winner into the nationals if you want to do that. It's entirely up to the state. Uh, Oregon, I, like I said, is doing 500 200 I mean, 500 300 and $200 here. Questions or comments? Scott, did you say how, is there a maximum word on their essay or a minimum word on their essay? 1,000 to 3,000. 1,000 to 3,000. Yeah, it was on one of them there. You might've missed it. You're there at the fair. And all first place state winners, only the first place state winners will be completed forms must be submitted to the national FC headquarters on or before April 15th. Now, if Judy gets it there and it, it is postmarked by April 15th, I'm sure you're fine. But I would I would actually follow up with her and make sure the, that you, it got there. If you emailed it, and emails go through pretty well. But I would, even when I mail something to her, I entered the brochure contest and I always, I always include a little note in there. I says, Judy, please email me when they get here. So I make sure that they got there. Okay, national SA contest, the rules and guidelines for the national and state FC high school age character counts SA contest, other dates do are the same. So it just kind of keeps them on there. And then uh, for the money for the nationals, and I'd like to hope I'd like to hope that it was could be more money. It says national SC monetary funds will be award funds will be the following five hundred dollars. First for first, three hundred dollars for second, and two hundred dollars for third place. So the thing is, like, if we had a first place winner in Oregon and they won five hundred dollars and they won first place at the nationals, they could win a thousand dollars. And award funds would be donated. And I, Bonnie, and I agreed to do this. Keepers Corner LLC. That's a business that Bonnie and I own. It's located in Klamath Falls. We're donating a thousand dollars this first year. And uh, plus donations from others it, it, when, when given. And we're not asking for anybody, but I just want everybody to understand that national FC funds will not be used. That'll be a direct uh, uh, a, uh, a um, donation from Scott and Bonnie here in Klamath Falls, and then we will do it. But you can, but donation for the NAFCE uh, for this contest are also accepted. So you just need to contact uh, Judy at headquarters, contact me and I'll work through there. The FC knowledge quiz, 10% of the quest is to be filled out and answered and submitted by the contestants. So they have a quiz and I'm gonna go through those quiz questions and I'm gonna see how many questions Wanda can answer. Are you still on Don't there? Pick on me. Don't pick on me. <laughs> uh, well, I'd like to pick on you. Cause then you'll say, God bless you. Bless you, you know, and you'll say, this FC knowledge quiz, along with the application and essay on other necessary forms, must be submitted March 1st, 2025, to the state coordinator. I always keep on emphasizing that date. 
okay, information to answer these questions to be located on the National FC website, www.nafc.org. And they just need to work through it. And by the way, last year I had a couple of, I, I was substitute teaching and I had some eighth graders and I had two or three of them. It took them about 20 minutes to answer the, the quiz. And they went on the website, found all the answers to the questions and, uh, and they're the, Contestants can use any of the internet resources that they can ask FCE members for information. In other words, they can kind of phone a friend if they absolutely need to. And, and if you have somebody who's really stuck on a question and they contact you, I would probably help them find the answer. I don't give them the answer, but I help them find it. Questions or comments? Okay. Oh, let's go back. I'm going to give you the quiz now. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to give this question to Marion. What does the acronym FCE stand for? Family Community Education. Good. So she got that right. That's a pretty easy question. Yeah, so I got the easy one. You know, I, and, and Marion's a pretty new member. So is Tony, who's, who's on here too. You know, and sometimes we need to realize that we as FCE members, sometimes we speak a different language. We speak FCE. So we need to let them know what these words mean, what these acronyms. Okay, here's one that's a little bit more difficult. Question number two. In what year was the National FC Organization and your state FC Organization organized? If your state does not have FCE, write NA. So we may have some people that are entering from states that are not. Thirty-six. You know, so they just didn't need to write N.A. If we had one from California, and we had a, by the way, we had a national winner in uh, fourth grade a few years ago, and she is from California. California does not currently have FCE. And by the way, I'm working on a gal from Kentucky, and she's contacted me, and so we may have a, a, a we may have a contestant from Kentucky. So the question is, anybody know what year the national organization was organized? Was it 1936? 1936. You got a winner there, Wanda. <laughs> How about your state organization, Wanda? I can tell you when Wilson County Clubs, I, let's see, the state's 75 years old. That, and Wilson County's got clubs that are 115. Yep. Okay. But that's not the question. The question is your state. I know the state was 75 years ago. So. Okay. So. So the, and they can find this if they go to the contact list on the nationals. It's listed on there, and on each one it'll say, like it'll have the it has the states and and it shows what year they're on there. And if you if we get a minute, I'll go down there and show you where that is. But Oregon was 1939. Anybody else know another state that they? I thought uh, um, I thought it was 1935. That's what I was told. Well, and, not. Yeah. not no, it was 1939. You think we were ahead of schedule? <laughs> I don't know. How about Hawaii? Is, is Barbara still on there? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's on the website. So these students got to look this up. They got to find out that we're old. Okay. Now, some questions here. Question number three. Who was the first president of the National FCE? Who is the current president of National FCE? And who is the current president of your state FCE? If your state does not have FCE, write NA. Who can tell me who the na first national president was? 1936. I can't hear you. Are you guys on mute? No, no. Ora Root. What? Ora Root. Yep, Bonnie got it right. Aura Roop. Okay, that was a tough one. You have to look it up. By the way, the place you'll find the answer on that is at the history page on the national website. Uh, how about the current national president? Judy Fulmer. Judy Fulmer. Okay, that's a pretty easy one for most of us. Now, your current state president, and I hope that's an easy one for you. Who's the current president of Tennessee? Esther Button. Okay, how about Hawaii? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. 
Well, you'd have to you'd have to look it up. I think it isn't it, uh, Jack O'Malley. Okay, yeah, it could I be. Think so. Okay, well, so if you were taking this test, you'd have to look it up. Open book. Oh, really small, yeah. Okay. It's open book test. Phone a friend. All right. Now, question number four. Write the national FCE mission statement, and I'm not going to ask you to, to, to recite that, but you'll find that on the national FCE website. They need to write that out, and so they can find it on there. It's 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 in there to at least two or three different places on the national FCE mission statement. Okay, and then the creed, and the national creed is something that we recite quite often, so they need to write that out. These are these are a little longer. Question number six, what are six things that FCE does? And we could probably answer this one okay. We can come out with six things that FCE does. But on the website, there's actually a page called, what does FCE do? And I think there's about 30 or 40 different things that we list on there. Maybe only 20, I don't know. Just some different things. And they just need to write down you know, some of the volunteer things we do. Uh, state contest, uh, uh, national contest, national conferences, regional, whatever else it might be. Some wonderful things that FCE does. So the students are going to have to answer this. This is 10% of the total contest. Okay. Here's number seven. What is the name of the yearly national FCE contest that design and held for fourth grade students? And Linda Hanbury can give me that one. Character counts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the fourth grade essay and artwork content, uh, character counts contest. Well, are you sure? Because I was fussed at for not saying, was it artwork and essay contest? Yeah, for the fourth graders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number eight. Where was the 2023 National FC Conference held? Florence, Kentucky. Florence is wrong. Erlanger. Erlanger. Yep, Erlanger. If it's in that Florence area, headquarters in Florence, but it's it's all kind of together there. All right. What is the name of the 2023 fourth grade essay and artwork contest winner and what state did she come from? Where would you find that? On the website. I think she was from Hawaii. And she was from Hawaii, and I don't remember her name. I'd have to go look it up. And if you're going to judge this, you better make sure you go look at the, uh, uh, better go look at the, uh, uh, make sure you're, you're checking the right answer. Okay. Question number 10. And this is fairly easy, but you can find six states that currently have FCE. And I think there are, Bonnie, I'll correct me. Bonnie, how many are there? 14? She might be. Sure. What's that? I think it is 14. Yeah, I think, I think it's, 14. it's 14 right now. Yeah, but you just got to name, you got to name six of them. Okay. Now I'm going to go through this on here, but I'm not, uh, and these are really small, so you're going to have a hard time seeing them. So I'm going to actually open them up a little bit later, the National FC Forms. So there, you'll have a title page like this. You'll have a page that kind of gives you some basics, and I'm going to go through the actual forms so you can read it. That's really small for my eyes, and unless you got better eyes than me. And then the instructions on the essay. And then uh, that right there is the state coordinator. And then you would actually fill it in. And this is the generic form. This is where you, the states that need to fill it in. They'd need to fill in. I'm actually going to go back a little bit. States that need to fill in the name of the state right here. And by the way, I have it both in a PDF and in a Word form. So you can change it as you need to on that right there. That page doesn't need any, too much changing. That that one does not need any changing. This one here, you'd want to put in your state coordinator. And then also, if you're giving monetary value on your placers there. So there's not too many places you have to change it. And then here's the application form. And I'm going to go through these again. I'll, I'll actually bring them up on here. I've got them loaded up and ready to go. Here's your scoring guide. Very, very hard to read that. It's too small. I'll go through it here in a minute. But basically, you can see here is the application. And if they want to get 10, it says it's completely right. So you'd write 10 in here or whatever it is. If they missed something, you'd write it in there. 
And then the essay, there's the first part, the second part, the third part, and the fourth part. And then here's your quiz. And I'll, I'll get these when they're a lot bigger so you can see them. And then here's the actual quiz sheet that they'll have on there. Okay, and please contact me if you have any questions at all. And there's both of my emails. Uh, I'd prefer you use the Outlook one. If you send the Charter one, sometimes it gets to me. Uh, I'm having trouble when I send it out under Charter. Uh, sometimes they don't get out to them. Okay, so I'm going to stop that for a minute. Do I have any questions or comments right now? Because I'm going to go share the screen and get bring up some other parts. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the national website. Okay, and this is actually on the national website. And you can see there's the home. And it's what I'm actually on is um, the resource library. And by the way, if you can't see, you got to just down here. And by the way, there's lots and lots of stuff on here. These are for the fourth grade essay and artwork contest right up here. These are the fourth grade essay and artwork contest. And then down here is your high school age right here. And I'm gonna actually gonna open this up. Now, one thing I wanna emphasize too, there is a pillar book and it has some information on that. And, um, Somebody asked me about the brochures, and I, I don't know if I've got them on here or not. I think they're on there. I'll go, I'll go see if they're on another page in a minute. This pillar book is something that would be well worth your time to print off. I'm going to open this up. Okay, can you guys see that? Anybody? So, yes. yes. Did we get okay. Uh, anyway, this is something that's a little handout. It's only a few pages long, but it's really got some good information. And I actually give it to the students that are interested in it because it gives them some really good ideas on getting started. Now, let's see if I can get out of here. I don't know how to hide my... Yeah. I'll just do this and I'll share it again. Trying to get out of this page. <sighs> Scott, can you print those out? Yes. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you those in a second. I just gotta try to I, I can't, you guys can't see it, but I can't get to my can't get to the top of my screen, so I'm gonna have to do this a little different. Oh, shoot. Oh, there we go. Now I can go share that again. Okay, so now we're back to we're back here. So here's your high school, and uh, here's your generic form, and it's in Word and a PDF, and here's the editing instructions. And so we, I, I, you can open those up there. I'm gonna open this up, and okay. So there's your title page. You'll need to edit it right here. You'll need to put in your state, and it's in. And these are you can print these off. Uh, Oregon's is already done. It's a, it's, so it would say Oregon right there. The other place that you need to edit the form would be, it, it, it would be uh, if you go down here, I'm going to go through this a little bit slower. So you can kind of see there's the title page. And then it talks about what it is. And we've kind of gone through that. As a matter of fact, the slides were kind of taken off them here. It's got the deadlines and so forth. Please interrupt me if I'm going too fast. Talks about the, the guidelines and the rules and so forth. And then down here on the essay instructions, and we went through there on exactly what those are. And then also on the contest judging, and, and we already went through a slide that talked about that. 
Here's another place you'd need to change it to your state contest. So Oregon actually has Oregon in there. If it was Tennessee, it'd be Tennessee, wherever it might be. And you just need to change that. And then also your state coordinator. And you're going to have to have somebody that's willing to do that. And it's not going to be a real big job, but they're going to have to uh, get somebody to judge it and so forth. And then also you would put in your amounts of money. And Oregon is, I'm the coordinator for Oregon. So it has mine in there. And then here it would have the amounts on there. And you can do it, anything like that. I would suggest, I don't know if I'd go more than what the national is. It, it looks kind of funny if, the, if you win more at the state than you do at the national level. Here's your information. Came all right off the slide. Here's the application, very typical. And by the way, I learned something about this this year. Name and you want the mailing address. You do not necessarily want their physical address because I had, I had six of them that I sent out and three of them came back to me because their mailing address and their physical address are not the same. Most of them, those three were in, a, in rural areas and they don't deliver mail at, in, at those areas there. So they have to have a post office box or something there. So that's why it says mailing address, not the physical one. But I got past it. I figured out how to get it to them. And then signatures and so forth it has typical run right there. And uh, age, you know, and then they put it down there. Must be high school age. And like I said, let's not getting splitting hairs on that right there. Signature applicant. It's very important, the signature of the guardian. Okay, now here is your, here's your rubric or your scoring guide. And you can see uh, here it is on the application. Fill out correctly and completed essays between 1,000 and 3,000 words in length. And if it is, I'd give them a 10. If there were some things that are missing, uh, you know, you might give them a six to an eight, somewhere a seven or something like that, and you, and you put the total over here. Those of us that have done this in, in schools, these are actually pretty easy to use. And then the first part of it is how did it affect it in the past? And then how did it, you know, was it really good? So it'd be 18 to 20. If it was pretty poor, it might be zero points. It might be one through five, whatever you want to put in, then put your total over here. And then the, ne and the next one on there is the present, trustworthiness in the present, same kind of thing across there. Just let me know if I'm going too fast. And then the essay here on the uh, same thing in the future, same kind of things. Did it cover it entirely? You know, it could be 18, 19, 20. It could be whatever it might be. And if it's really poor, I'd put in a zero. If it's, or if it's non-existent or whatever you kind of feel on points. And then the essay right here. And then... The quiz is really easy because if they got if they got ten right, yeah, I'd put ten. If they got eight right, I'd put eight. If they put miss, if they, you know, and I will tell you that I found out that um, most of them did extremely well. They did extremely well on the quiz, which made me happy. Okay, and then here's the actual quiz itself. So they would need to submit this, and it tells you that it's on or before the state, you know, on or before March first. And you, when at the national level, you would need to submit all the forms. You need to, well, you don't need to submit the scoring of that particular student, but you need to submit the application, the, uh, the, the essay, and the quiz. Scott, when you had judges, were they FC members? They happen to be all board members, but I don't think they have to be. Uh, I don't think they have to be FCE members. If you could find some teachers or somebody that were non-biased, you know, they didn't know any of the students, I think they'd be great. And I, 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 what do you think about that? I think that's great. I just usually use a teacher when I do the fourth grade ones in the yes. county. I right. usually use a teacher that's not familiar with any of the teachers, I mean the students, and I just wondered if your FCE members were judging the high school ones or if you got somebody else too. Well, this first year, we just did it that way. And it might okay. be nice if we could find some teachers, but I'm going to have to make sure because most of the contestants came from our area because I was the real drive on it and pushed it through there quite a bit. So there's there's your there's your national one. Um, I'm going to go share my screen again here a little bit. 
and see if I can find the uh, um, I open this. I have a thing on the top of my, I don't know how to hide this little thing on, you guys can't see it, but anyway, well, I'm going to, I'll, I'll stop the share and I'll go do the Oregon one for a second. And I'm just, oh, I can't get I can't minimize when I'm recording. That's okay. Just give me a minute. So, so here's the Oregon FCE website. And so you can see there, and actually I've got ours loaded right on the very front. And there's the little uh, the little pillar book, so so they can open that up and and print that off if they want to, and then here's our uh, same one, and you can see how I put Oregon in here, everywhere you see, you know, I told you you needed to add those in there where it says Oregon, 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 and that's where you'd have to change that to Tennessee or Kentucky or whatever state it might be or or Hawaii, whatever it might be. And then the same thing, this is pretty much the same thing. And you guys that just need to put in there in UK and see where here's our Oregon one right here, 500, 300 and $200. Any questions on any of those? I guess I must be pretty good, huh? You're real good. No, I just, and any comments or what thoughts or anything like that on this contest? I think it's going to be good. I really do. Okay. Well, I, it, it's going to take a, a year or two to kind of get it rolling a little bit here and, and uh, we'll see what we can do on it. Any other comments or questions? Um, Scott. Yes. Lori, Laura. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, and I hope this helped answer some questions, and I hope you guys kind of spread the word. It'd be great if we had 14 entries from 14 different states next year. And I got to tell you a little story. I, when I was in Kentucky at the National Conference, I went to, uh, I took two Hawaii gals. I took Lynn and uh, Mar Mar Margaret to, uh, to, to lunch. We went to lunch at uh, Cracker Barrel, and I had a waitress there, and she's still in high school. And, She's very interested in joining the, con and the contest. So I gave her my card and everything like that. We've already texted back and forth a couple of times. So we may have an entry from Kentucky. So uh, is Roy still on here? Roy, did that answer most of your questions? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, did that answer most of your questions? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm beginning with Miss Hannah Berry. Okay. She, you know, I know she's gonna run it all down to me. Okay. Well, just just and contact me if you need to. I got somebody in the chat, and I'm going to re open this up. And it says uh, uh, it is open to homeschool. Yes, it's open for homeschool. They, somebody had a question on that, and yes, it's open to. It does not have to be done at school, and that's something I wish that we'd kind of get away from in the fourth grade. It can be done at church. It can be done at 4-H, uh, home, whatever it is. So. Well, I appreciate your time. I hope I answered all your questions. And please give me a phone call or a text or uh, an email if you got any questions. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to turn you're the hanging around. Off. What's that? You hanging around? I will. I'll, I'm going to 